Hey guys, my name is Ben Howard. Welcome back out here to Tiger River where we're getting ready for the Hub City Amateur Championships. Right now we're getting ready to go into the back nine. So if you haven't watched the front nine, I'd, I'd go back and watch that. But right now we're on hole 10. This is a par four, 600 feet. Uh, on this tee shot, you're really trying to hit this gap with something overstable. Uh, biggest reason for that is because this tree line you can see in front of us through the gap, it actually marks the OB line right. And typically the OB line comes off the tree line. So if you hit in those trees and fall straight down, you're gonna be out of bounds. So you want to throw something either at the trees or go over the top of them through the gap, get it to fade off. And your second shot really depends on how far left you get. If you hug those trees and stay really close to them, you can give yourself a really easy approach shot. But if you play it safer and go way left, it gives you a harder approach shot into the green. But even though it makes the birdie harder if you go out way left, it, it definitely makes the par very easy. So that's going to be my play for this one. good let's get off the, yeah there we go that'll be really good that actually got a, a nice push out of it i'm gonna throw one more no well get under it oh that would be more my aggressive play to try and hide your flip something into the gap and try and get to push over those trees and finish late because if you can do that it makes that pro shot very easy but I'll be curious to see where that ballista ended up because it should be a good spot. But yeah, from here you can see what I'm talking about with how low the ceiling could be because it's probably about as tall as the basket at its lowest point. So really just got to like force a driver through there for this what I'm going to do. I wouldn't mind trying to throw a hyzer over these trees or something like that, but it just brings the OB into play. So I feel like it's just going to be a nice safe play to just try and just push this through there, see what we can get. Get through. Yes. Go, 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 go. Okay. It's a little short, but that's a putt. Ah, dadgummit. Felt good on my hand, too. Just a little short. Got to make those, though. All right, guys. We're on hole 11. This is a par 4, 580 feet. Playing the red basket you see straight in front of us. Biggest thing to pay attention to is we've got OB marked by the tall grass off to the left that goes up, curves around behind the basket, and then the tree line off to the right also marks the OB. Same way as the last hole where it's like just a meter off the tree line is the OB line. So if you hit those trees and fall straight down, you're going to be out of bounds. Um, best play I really found on this hole is just throw like something you can get like at least 300 to 350 feet, but you know will spike into the ground because as you can see, the ground slopes down away from us. And if you throw something that's too glidey on hyzer, it's gonna wanna carry left out of bounds or right out of bounds if you're throwing a forehand. But as long as you throw something overstable enough that you can get enough distance with, you can get a fairly, a fairly easy approach shot. Only thing that's really hard is that you're going back uphill. And so it plays a little bit longer than you would think. Okay, fade, fade, okay. It was a little bit lower than I meant for that to be, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, it's a little bit farther right than I'm used to being because typically I end up at pushing the left side rough to kind of open up the backhand hyzer, but I'll probably just have like a 300 foot approach shot or something like that. Okay, so I guess I got a big skip. That I couldn't see once it got to the other side of the hill because I'm really close to this left side, kind of like what I was talking about or like, it's really easy to go out of bounds left if you're not careful. So really lucky I ended up here, but now you can tell we've got probably a little bit closer than I was thinking off the tee, maybe closer to like 250, but it's gonna play close to that 300 foot range just because we're going uphill. But I'm just gonna try and throw this straight at it. Just gotta make sure I give it a lot of height. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Ah, missing everything low today. All those putts are feeling good. They're just a little too low. All right, guys, we're on hole 12. This is a par three, 230 feet. Basket's just straight ahead. Uh, biggest thing to pay attention to is 
Uh, sometimes they play tall grasses out of bounds. I'm not sure if they're playing it that way for this tournament. I'm just going to assume they are because I couldn't find anything on the uh, tournament page about it. Really just got to make sure I put this in play. Best play I've really found is just trying to throw something at this tree just short of the basket. It's about, if you hit it and fall straight down, I think you've got like a 30 footer. So it's a very, very consistent play just to try and throw it right at that tree. And if you miss it either side, typically you're parked. Oh my gosh, dude. Go, 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 go. Oh my gosh, I might be in bounds. Holy crap, that's so stupid. There you go. Yeah, that hole showed me what I was doing, what I've been doing wrong. I've been playing scared. I've been playing like the OB is going to come out and grab me when if I just throw the shots I know I can, like these two, both of them are 20 feet. But I'm, instead, I'm trying to throw something overstable for no reason when I can just throw a dead straight 200-foot shot and be parked. So I'm not going to play scared anymore. I'm playing aggressive. All right, guys, we're on hole 13. This is a par 3, 320 feet. Basket's just straight ahead on the side of this hill. Uh, I'm going to say this hole probably plays closer to like 400 feet almost. But same thing. OB on both sides is marked by the tall grass and behind the basket. Somehow you end up long on this hole. But just really just going to try and blast something up there into the side of this hill. Just see what kind of putt I can give myself. Come out of it, please. I think we're good. I don't know. It didn't really come back as much as I would have liked, but... I should be in bounds. Worst case scenario, I'm out of bounds with like a 40 foot putt. Okay, I thought it was gonna be a little bit lower down the hill, but I've actually got up here into, I feel like edge of circle. So, let's go ahead and make it. Ah, dang, a weird footing there. I gotta take my time a little bit more on those putts. All right, guys, we're on hole 14. This is a par three, 360 feet. Basket's just straight ahead. Um, you really got two options on this one. You can go wide hyzer with an uh, overstable driver, or you can just go straight at the basket. Um, I don't know if the tall grass marks the OB on this hole or not. Last time we played a tournament out here, the tall grass on the right played as a, ha a hazard, which means you, you take the stroke penalty, but you play where it lies. And then the OB was marked by the tree line off to the left, not the tall grass. So I'm going to assume that's how they're going to play it. But I'm just going to try and throw two shots just down the middle, one mid, one fairway. And go with, go with the mid as my actual play first. Ah. I was scared of it flipping over on me and I put on a little bit of hyzer when I needed it flat. Okay. It's not too bad over there. I just have to see what kind of approach that I can ha uh, have. <sighs> Same thing, early. Okay, one more. <sighs> Ooh, that's it. Flip a little more for me. Get in the hole. Oh man, I went long. Yeah, I might need to do that. I'm a little scared of throwing, trying to throw something that'll hyzer flip on this hole, just because obviously that it makes it a little bit more touchy. But I, that's just a really stock shot for me. Just that baby hyzer, get it to pop up and just push straight. So probably go with that one. Okay, so this is where my first shot ended up. I don't know if this is actually going to be played as out of bounds or not. So I'm just going to play it as if it's safe, but if anybody knows in the comments, please let me know if this is actually out of bounds or what. So I don't, I can't remember if this would be played as, I can't remember how we played it last time, but we just go with benefit to the player. Right, let's go ahead and get up and down. Ah, uh, go. E. 
needed that to fade at least a little bit on me. Jeez. Just went dead straight. Let's see. We've got the pro gap here. The safe gap out here, but we'll go with the pro gap. There we go. Finally got some pace on my putt. Actually got it there. All right, guys, we're on hole 15. This is a par five, 800 feet. Uh, this one's a little more difficult to explain than a lot of other holes out here. I'm just gonna kind of break the hole into different parts and explain each one. So like for the tee shot, I'm trying to get past this stump and up to the left as best as I can. Uh, biggest thing you wanna be careful about is turning your drive over because there is some OB off to the right. I think it's like the brush pile or something like that. But the biggest, but the thing you're more likely to do is throw something early left which is just going to get you in jail a lot of times where you either have to pitch out or do some weird like scramble shot. So my goal for the shot is just try and push something straight over the top of that stump and get it to fade left while pushing forward at the same time. Ah, it's early. Dang it. Okay, I hit something so I probably won't be in tree line, but that's not good. Let me throw one more. Yeah, too straight, but that's that's closer to what I need. That's probably what I need to do. Just throw something a little bit flippier and just try and stay on the tee pad because trying to run up from off the, the back side of this tee pad is not really working for me. Okay, so luckily I got a good kick back out towards the fairway. So I'm just going to try and put myself where I wanted to off the tee. Just need to be careful about stalling this out. Just got to get a lot of height and a lot of Anheuser. Get it bend left. That should be fun. Okay, so we've gotten to the second section out of the three sections for this hole, which is the wooded section. As you can see, there's a good amount of trees in the middle of the fairway. But what you probably can't tell is there's two different fairways for this hole. You've got the one you can kind of see right here, close to the right side rough. And then there's one tucked off to the left, up near the left side rough. Really all I'm trying to do in this section is just throw something through all these trees and get as far up there as I can. But really just going to take a really nice shot because I'm going to have to throw like a flex forehand. I'm just going to need to push straight like pretty much the entirety of the flight and not fade out at all. Because another thing you can't really see is this fairway slopes from left to right. And the right side rough is really bad. So really need to make sure that if I make a mistake, it's that I'm on the left side of the fairway. That was good. Get off that tree. Okay. Hopefully I didn't get too big of a skip because then I'll be in that right side rough. But I didn't hit anything. So I should at least have like somewhat of an approach into the green. It's gonna be really hard from that right side, but I'll have a look at it at least. Okay, so luckily I didn't go too far into the woods and I've actually got a, a look at it getting up and down from my par, but this tall grass off to the left is out of bounds. So if I'm gonna try and go, get up there, I've got to throw something that's understable on a bunch of Anheuser and get a drag left. Cause I don't know if you can see it, but this split tree up here that's probably 30 feet left of the basket. So I've got to get this to drag way left. And I don't have any way to really throw a forehand, but I've got to go for it because the par on this hole is getting, getting strokes on the field most of the time. Ah, that's it. Ah, nope. That was the good, that was the right angle I needed. Maybe a little bit more, but just had, I couldn't really give it the height I needed to in that stance. I should have adjusted a little bit more, but oh well. All right, let's go ahead and get up and down. Ooh, sit down. All right, that's a little long, but that'll be, that'll be like a 25 foot putt. Ooh, good catch. 
All right, guys, we're on hole 16. This is a par three, 430 feet. You should be able to see it, just the red basket straight ahead. Biggest thing to pay attention to is all tall grass is out of bounds. On this one, you've got basically like a plus sign area of inbounds with the path going straight to the red basket and then the path going from the short tee pad to the yellow basket. So uh, this one is kind of reachable and you do have like a decent area up there to land a disc if you can get it up there, but you can't throw really throw anything out to the right because as you can, I don't know if you can really see it from here, but the basket's on like a steep, like almost 45 degree slope. So you really got to have something that's moving from left to right. And you've also got this stuff off to the right that kind of blocks the hyzer shot. But I'm gonna do a layup and then I'll try one that'll go for the green and just see what we got. Let's see. Yeah, that's perfect, right in the middle. That's definitely a good layup. Now let's go for it. Get over it. Get over it. Oh, I turned way more than I thought it was going to. Oof. Okay, one more. Fade out of it. Fade out of it. Fade out of it. Fade out of it. Come on. Wow, that's still short. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going for this one. There's literally no reason for me to go for that. I forgot to mention there's a big cluster of trees between us and the basket from the tee pad, but all I really need to do is just put something to the base of the hill and it gives me like a 15 to 20 footer. So it doesn't, shouldn't really come into play. And that's, that's more where you want to land anyway, just because it's a little bit wider down there. And like trying to get something to push up the hill is just going to make it to where you're probably going to roll back and can easily roll out of bounds. But let's go and get up there for a par. Ooh, sit, sit, yes. Ooh. That's higher up the hill than I meant for it to be, but I'll take it. So luckily I was able to find my Zeus in Hades on you know, that rough over there, but I actually ended up way, getting way closer than I thought, but uh, I didn't really, I couldn't feel it from the tee pad, but there's actually a left to right wind on that hole. And it just made these two just kind of drag farther right than they would normally. So, ah. Uh, I don't think the Hades is going to be my shot for this hole. I mean, it's hard to tell because typically I would get this thing to fade out if I threw it on that line, but there's not really any way for me to know unless I go back and throw it again when there's no wind. But I think the Zeus would be a really good play for me to try that same shot because there's a lot of room to land out here. It's just, as you can see, it's a pretty difficult shot. And if you don't execute it, you can end up like, almost 150 feet behind the bat away from the basket for your par so probably not going to be worth it i'm just going to play for par on this hole all right guys we're on hole 17 this is a par four 540 feet on this hole stay with me all tall grass is out of bounds and we've got two islands on this one the island where the basket is and then the island short of that you can kind of see with the uh, two rocks in front of it but basically on this hole unless you have 500 feet of power you're going to be trying to lay up to the first island and then throw your pro shot on the green. The, depending on how aggressive you want to get, it pretty much dictates how far up the island you want to throw. Because you can easily put it to the very front side of the first island and give yourself like a 220 foot approach shot. Or you can play it safe and give yourself like a 300 foot approach shot. Really up to you. Um, I think it plays, if you don't cross in bounds at all, you play the short tee pad. If you cross inbounds up there and then throw out of bounds on your second shot, you take the drop zone up there. But I'm just going to try and take something overstable, throw it out to the right, get it to spike in, and just try and give myself like a 250 foot approach shot. Ooh, that's a little low, but I think we're good. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really good. That might, that's probably a little bit closer than what I was meaning to do. Last one. Why am I throwing it so low? I stay high. 
you see because that's that's what you don't want to do is throw something low because then i don't cross at all and i got to go to the short tee pad and play that for my three all right so i ended up losing that horizon dd3 in there so it's got my name and number in it if anybody finds it i'd really like to get that back so i'd definitely be willing to give you a disc or anything for it if you do find it in here but um yeah about about what i expected 250 foot approach shot just got to be careful because the uh Island's kind of shaped like a guitar pick, and the basket's really close to the back edge. So if I go long, it's pretty likely I'm going to go out of bounds. So all I really got to do is just stick this under the basket and be fine. Mm, sit. Sit. Hard. Okay. It's a little left of what I wanted, but that's still like a 20, 25-foot putt. There we go. You did that. All right, guys, we're on hole 18. This is the final hole of the video. It's a par four, 674 feet. On um, this hole, you're really trying to throw something just straight as far as you can. Uh, typically, if you can get something past these trees up to the left while still pushing straight, that will give you like a 250 to 300 foot approach shot, depending on how well you do it. And then for your approach shot, you're going up to the right with the basket being on top of a hill. Biggest thing to worry about in this hole is we're going to have OB Lod pan all on the left side that goes all the way up and wraps around the basket and it comes down to the road which is also marking marking the out of bounds uh, only other thing is there's a mando tree up here i don't remember which one it is but it's one of the trees up to the right i think it should be marked during the tournament but that's pretty much just so people don't go over the road trying to throw skip shots but all i'm really trying to do is throw something understable and high at this tree on the left trying to get the bend off of it while keeping it tight and pushing forward the biggest mistake I don't want to make is going out of bounds left by like throwing something that's too high, that's a little too overstable. If I'd rather make a mistake, I'd rather turn it over too much to the right because most of the time, if you're throwing it high enough, you'll hit one of these trees and just fall down or kick back to the left in the middle of the fairway. And you don't have to get a lot of distance on this hole to get up and down for a birdie, but getting as far as you can is going to make that shot a lot easier. So typically, I want to try and get as far as I can. Ah, I needed it flat. Sit. Sit hard. Sit. Okay. That's pretty typically inbounds. I probably won't be able to get up and down for a birdie, but I can get a par from there. Last one. It's actually a brand new disc. I haven't thrown this one yet. The King. Let's see. Ooh, it's flippy. Oh, wow. Holy crap, that thing bombs. Whew. Okay, so this isn't a bad spot. It's just a little obstructed by this tree, but all it really does is just, no, it doesn't let me throw anything high. I'm just gonna have to throw something low and driven. So I'm gonna try the king again. This thing goes really far. Biggest thing I gotta worry about is the tall grass off to the left is out of bounds. And once again, the road's out of bounds, but I'm just gonna try and rip this just straight at it. A little bit of hyzer, see if I can get to pop up the flat again. Nothing crazy. Not too low. Skip. Go. Run, 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 run. Yeah. Okay. That'll give me like a somewhere between 200 and 150 feet to the basket for my par. I'll take it. All right, yeah. Not too much left. Just going to try and leave this to the left side of the basket. So that way I don't have to worry about rolling down the hill. But still going to try and give this a little bit of a bid. Nope, sit. That is a scary putt. <laughs> Get there. Oh, sit. All right, guys, they finish up a round out here at Tiger. I'm really not mad with how I played today. I definitely feel like I could have played better. I definitely left a few strokes out in the putting green, but the biggest takeaway from this is, like I said on hole 12, I've got to play aggressive. I can't be timid on these holes trying to ensure getting pars. I've got to either play for par or play for birdie. There's no in between. I've got to, and that's especially gonna be really important on pipeline 
because a lot of those holes are holes where you need to be aggressive in order to get birdies, even pars on some of those holes. And just, just getting in that mindset of, I don't care how small the gap is. I don't care how hard the shot is going to be. I need to hit it and do be fully committed into doing it. If I can take that mindset in the pipeline, I'm going to shoot really well out there. So hopefully I can get that video out sometime tomorrow, but I'm um, not sure what the score is so far. I think that put me at like three over in total. So, I mean, I could shoot under par and get back to even or something out of that pipeline, but not really counting on that. Like I said, I think even's a thousand rated. So y'all wish me luck. And uh, if you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe. And thank y'all so much for watching. Have a good one. Bye.